so I'm possibly a little bit embarrassed to admit this, but even as a third year internal medicine resident, I don't know if I truly had the solidest understanding of reticulocyte count and reticulocyte index, corrected reticulocyte count. There's just so many different things and it just gets confusing. And then I go in the EMR and they're all listed as different things as well. And I'm sure if I had problems understanding this, that there's somebody out there who probably also was confused by this. So I just want to share what I learned with you guys today. So uh, in terms of anemia, Oftentimes, one of our ways of evaluating this is to get that reticulocyte count. Basically, we're looking for if the bone marrow is appropriately producing uh, RBCs in response to the anemia. And today what I learned is that actually, um, you know, we can look at the reticulocyte count and the index and everything, which I will go over in a bit. But actually, sometimes one of the most simple things is just to look at the absolute reticulocyte count. And if it's greater than 100, then that is suggesting that the patient is actually doing a pretty good job in terms of their bone marrow response. So normal reticulocyte count is anywhere between 30 and 100. So uh, in response to anemia, you want to look for it to be greater than 100. But if somebody's hemoglobin is 9, for example, and their absolute retic count is 40 or 50, that suggests possibly some kind of nutritional deficiency. Next, let's talk about uh, the reticulocyte index, uh, because this is something that you may be a little bit more familiar with learning uh, in medical school. So if we go really quickly to pocket medicine and we go to the section on anemia, you will see that they mention uh, checking the reticulocyte index. And this is measured by this fancy uh, equation right here. And what you're looking for is a reticulocyte index of greater than 2% to suggest an adequate marrow response and a reticulocyte count index less than 2% to suggest hypoproliferation. All right, so Ri greater than 2% equals adequate bone marrow response and reticulocyte index less than 2% is hypoproliferation. So again, I really want you guys to keep that in mind. I want you to make sure that the absolute reticulocyte count is greater than 100 and then you want to be looking for a reticulocyte index of greater than 2% to suggest that there is uh, no nutritional deficiency. Now the problem is when you go to your actual EMR, you're going to see something like this where um, I've pulled in the hemoglobin, hematocrit, the reticulocyte count percent, the reticulocyte count absolute, and the corrected reticulocyte count. And there's so many different numbers here and it's like, what am I actually looking at here? So obviously, as I said uh, earlier, the simplest one is the fact that you can just look straight at the absolute reticulocyte count and greater than 100. So you can see that this patient's hemoglobin is in the nines and the absolute reticulocyte count is in the 300s or 200s, which means that they are seemingly having a good response. It doesn't suggest that they have a nutritional deficiency. But then how do we actually calculate the reticulocyte index? So in terms of the numbers that you get from ordering a reticulocyte count, the first one that they give you is the raw reticulocyte count of 10.23%. And then after that, they give you the corrected reticulocyte count, which is just applying a correction factor, basically by using the patient's hematocrit, so patient's hematocrit, divided by a normal hematocrit, which they generally set at 45, so normal hematocrit. And this will give you a value of 6.5%. Now, in order to get your reticulocyte index from that, you then have to divide by what's called a maturation factor. So divide this whole thing by a maturation factor. And then finally, the product of this entire equation is going to be your reticulocyte index. So for some reason, and I don't know if this is the same at every EMR, um, but our EMR does not tell you the reticulocyte index on its own. And I feel like this should be something that's programmed into the EMR because it makes it a lot easier. But instead, we're going to have to go to MDCalc to calculate this. All right, and here I just pulled up a quick website to show you what the maturation correction factor is. So um, if the patient's hematocrit is less than 15%, then you divide by 2.5. 16 to 25, you divide by 2. 
26 to 35, you divide by 1.5, and 36 to 45, you divide by 1. So in this case, um, you know, this 6.5% number here is the corrected reticulocyte count, and our EMR actually does show it, but they don't do that next step of the equation of dividing by the maturation factor in order to get the reticulocyte index. In this case, our patient's hematocrit is 28.6, which means that their maturation factor in this case would be 1.5. So if you do 6.5 divided by 1.5, then you get a reticulocyte index of 4.333, okay? So our patient's reticulocyte index is 4.33, which again is greater than 2, so it suggests an adequate response. And this also lines up with the absolute reticulocyte count being greater than 100. So both of these are pointing to it. So obviously, you know, the, the simplest one is to just look at the absolute reticulocyte count greater than 100. Okay, it suggests that there's no nutritional deficiency going on. But then if we really wanted to go through the whole process, we would have to figure out what the maturation factor is and then get that number of 4.33. And uh, probably the quickest way to do it would just be to go to MD calc, which I need to pull up here. Um, so in this case, uh, our patient's percent of reticulocytes is 10.23%, hematocrit was 28.6, and normal hematocrit is 45. So you'll see that this is the corrected reticulocyte count, not the absolute reticulocyte, reticulocyte count. So again, it's very confusing. And then the reticulocyte index is 4.33, suggesting an adequate response. So now let's zoom out a little bit. And let's say that the patient did not have an adequate response. So say this patient's reticulocyte index hypothetically was 1.2, and their absolute particular site count uh, was 45. What are some of the things that you would order in order to work up a possible uh, bone marrow production problem or from a nutritional standpoint. Um, so the clear things that we are always going to order is going to be <clears throat> that vitamin B12. And remember, it takes, you know, multiple years of vegan diet or some kind of malabsorptive process for you to deplete your vitamin B12 stores. And then folate, Although do note that there is a uh, things we do for no reason, um, saying that it's actually not the, you know, the most cost-effective thing to do, checking serum folate levels in patients with anemia. And they suggest that you just empirically treat. If you have any suspicion, just give them a couple days of folate supplementation and that will give them, get them back up to um, you know, folate repletion. You will find in practice though that everybody will order a folate and B12. And so in practice, we still do it. But uh, just know that there is that things we do for no reason that suggests that it's really not a cost-effective thing to check. And then another thing that I learned today was that you should also check for the zinc levels and copper levels. The main reason you check for these, so copper can cause a macrocytic anemia as well. Um, but zinc, the reason you check this is that lots of patients who are on zinc supplementation will actually prevent the absorption of copper. So too much zinc will lead to uh, inadequate copper storage. So this blocks copper absorption. The other thing I wanted to point out really quickly is if you have a patient where you're not really sure if it's vitamin B12 deficiency or folate deficiency, what is the next couple of tests that you can check to figure out what's actually driving the anemia? And the answer to that is going to be, um, you know, sending that homocysteine and the methylmalonic acid or the MMA. And this is a possible question that you may get asked either on the boards or when you're rotating on service, but what is the pattern that would be suggestive of a vitamin B12 deficiency and what would be the pattern of a folate deficiency? So vitamin B12 is going to cause an elevation in both your homocysteine and your MMA. On the other hand, folate is only gonna cause uh, an elevation in the homocysteine alone. This is very handy for when you really aren't sure which one's driving it or the vitamin B12 level is like 250 and it's like borderline low, but you don't know if it's actually causing a problem, then you can just check the homocysteine and MMA levels. And then I like to remember it as vitamin B12. So B is for both. So both homocysteine and MMA will be elevated. And then for folate, which one's going to be elevated? I just think of F is kind of close to H, like FGH, so homocysteine is going to be elevated. That's kind of my stupid way of remembering which one's going to be elevated. And then the MMA will be normal. Oh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but of course you're going to be checking iron studies uh, as part of the nutritional workup. And then if this continues to be negative, then you're going to be going down some more esoteric things, um, such as checking for lead poisoning uh, or thalassemias. These can all lead to bone marrow uh, production defects. 
Uh, and then something that we actually do see quite commonly in the elderly population would be myelodysplastic syndrome. And so for evaluation of that, you can start off with an SPEP and UPEP, which could help you narrow down your suspicion. But ultimate, ultimately, uh, the formal diagnosis would be uh, through a bone marrow biopsy. Anyways, I hope this video helped in terms of understanding what to look for when you actually order that reticulocyte count. Again, remember the two key things, the absolute reticulocyte count greater than 100 and your reticulocyte index of greater than two. However, know that it's very cumbersome to kind of calculate all this, but now hopefully this helps you understand in your EMR, you know, what all these percentages that they're displaying to you actually mean. That way you can know if you still need to apply the maturation factor in order to calculate that uh, reticulocyte index. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.